just how lethal the situation could become. The substance posed no threat. The casting process for the 1982 TV series St. Elsewhere was a careful and deliberate one. Each role was carefully considered, and the producers looked for actors who could bring depth and realism to their characters. For the role of Dr. Mark Craig, the producers wanted a well-respected actor who could portray the character's complexities. They chose William Daniels, who was known for his work on stage and screen. Daniels' ability to convey both the surgical precision and the emotional vulnerability of the character made him an ideal choice. To play Dr. Donald Westfall, the hospital's chief of staff, the producers selected Ed Flanders. Flanders brought a sense of authority and compassion to the role, making him a believable and relatable leader. The character of Dr. Ben Samuels was played by David Burney, who was chosen for his ability to portray the character's intelligence and intensity. Bernie's performance helped to make Dr. Samuels one of the most memorable characters on the show. To play the role of Nurse Helen Rosenthal, the producers selected Christina Pickles. Pickles' warm and nurturing presence helped to make Nurse Rosenthal a beloved character among viewers. The casting of St. Elsewhere was a crucial part of the show's success. Each actor brought their own unique talents and abilities to their roles, helping to create a rich and dynamic ensemble. Through careful auditions, chemistry tests, and pivotal moments, the producers were able to assemble a cast that would leave a lasting impact on television history. Hi. Get all your shopping done? Oh, everyone except you. The most difficult. The directors of the 1982 TV series St. Elsewhere, including Thomas Carter, Mark Tinker, and others, brought a unique vision to life through their realistic and innovative approach. They were inspired by the raw energy of hospital settings and aimed to create a show that captured the unpredictability and drama of daily life in a hospital. Their style was characterized by a documentary-like realism with handheld cameras and naturalistic lighting. They also employed a loose, improvisational directing style, encouraging actors to bring their own ideas and emotions to their performances. This approach helped to create a sense of authenticity an immediacy that set St. Elsewhere apart from other medical dramas of the time. To achieve this vision, the directors worked closely with the cast and crew, fostering a collaborative and creative environment. They encouraged the actors to develop their characters and storylines and worked with the writers to ensure that the scripts were grounded in reality. The directors also drew inspiration from a wide range of sources, including literature, film, and theater, incorporating elements of these forms into their visual storytelling. Overall, the directors of St. Elsewhere brought a unique and innovative vision to life through their realistic and improvisational approach. Their collaborative style and creative influences helped to create a show that resonated with audiences and left a lasting impact on the world of television. Choose a casket, burial clothes, what liquor to serve during calling hours, St. Elsewhere was a groundbreaking TV series that aired from 1982 to 1988. It was known for its realistic portrayal of a hospital staff struggles, both personal and professional. The show was praised for its high quality writing, talented cast, and innovative storytelling. One particular scene that had a lasting impact on me was the final episode, where it is revealed that the entire series was just a figment of an autistic child's imagination. This twist ending was a bold, an unexpected move that left audiences stunned. St. Elsewhere's enduring qualities include its willingness to tackle difficult and taboo subjects such as mental illness, addiction, and homosexuality. The show was not afraid to push boundaries and challenge its audience's perceptions. Its impact on television history is undeniable as it paved the way for future medical dramas and proved that serialized storytelling could be successful on network TV. Do you have a favorite memory or personal experience related to St. Elsewhere? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. In the coming moments, we will share some funny, shocking, and sad facts about St. Elsewhere. So keep watching this video. Going away for the holidays? I wish. How about you? No, no. The production of the 1982 TV series St. Elsewhere took place in both studio sets and real life locations. The main setting was St. Eligius Hospital, a fictional teaching hospital in Boston. The set design was meticulously crafted to depict a busy, chaotic, and often underfunded medical institution. 
The hospital's design included a labyrinth of corridors, patient rooms, operating theaters, and office spaces, which aimed to create an authentic and immersive environment for both the characters and the audience. To film St. Elsewhere, the production team utilized a soundstage at the Charlie Chaplin Studios in Los Angeles. The set designers built a massive, detailed replica of the hospital's interior, including a working elevator. This allowed the crew to shoot scenes efficiently and maintain continuity throughout the series. In addition to the studio sets, the production team ventured to various external locations to film exterior shots and establish the series' East Coast setting. These locations included the University of Southern California's University Park campus, which doubled as the exterior of St. Eligius Hospital and the streets of Boston, where the crew shot various establishing shots and exterior scenes. One of the logistical challenges faced during the production of St. Elsewhere was coordinating the large cast and crew, which often worked simultaneously on different sets and locations. To manage this, the production team implemented a strict shooting schedule and organized the sets to maximize efficiency. They also used innovative techniques, such as split-screen photography, to combine footage from multiple takes or locations, creating the illusion of a single, seamless scene. St. Elsewhere was also one of the first TV series to employ computer-generated imagery in its opening credits. The iconic opening sequence featured a fly-through of a stylized, rotating model of the human brain, accompanied by the show's theme music. This groundbreaking use of CGI technology set a precedent for future TV productions and demonstrated the series' commitment to innovation and creativity. There's been one. St. Elsewhere was a groundbreaking hospital drama that aired from 1982 to 1988. The show was known for its gritty realism and top-notch ensemble cast, which included Denzel Washington, Howie Mandel, and Ed Begley Jr., among many others. These actors launched their careers on the fast-paced and witty show. St. Elsewhere tackled complex issues with charm and drama, making it a standout in the world of television. The show also featured notable guest stars, such as Betty White, adding to its appeal. The show's ending was unique and thought-provoking, leaving a lasting impression on viewers. It has been suggested that the final scene represented the act of imagining a simpler life, much like viewers do when they watch the show. The writing, directing, and ensemble cast were all of high quality, reminiscent of the high standards set by MTM Productions. Unfortunately, the show has not been rerun since its original airing, leaving many to miss out on its captivating storytelling. Overall, St. Elsewhere was a remarkable and intricate show that left a lasting impact on the television landscape. Its enduring legacy is a testament to its high quality production and storytelling. This fingering. Would you open that briefcase of mine? The creation of the St. Elsewhere score and soundtrack was a collaborative effort between composers, musicians, and producers. The music was composed to complement the narrative and emotional tone of the series, which was set in a busy teaching hospital. The composers aimed to capture the tension, drama, and emotion of the scenes through their music. One of the composers, Dave Grusin, was an accomplished musician and composer who had already won several Grammy Awards for his work. He brought his jazz background to the score, creating a unique sound that helped to set St. Elsewhere apart from other medical dramas of the time. The soundtrack also featured a variety of popular songs from the early 1980s, which were used to help establish the setting and create a specific mood for each episode. These songs were carefully chosen to complement the action on screen and enhance the viewer's emotional experience. The music in St. Elsewhere was used to great effect, helping to create a sense of tension and drama in the operating room, while also providing moments of levity and humor in the hospital's more lighthearted scenes. The score and soundtrack were integral to the show's success and helped to establish St. Elsewhere as a groundbreaking and innovative series. Overall, the music in St. Elsewhere was a key element in the show's success, providing a rich and nuanced soundtrack that complemented the narrative and emotional tone of the series. The composers and musicians involved in the creation of the score and soundtrack brought their considerable talents to bear, creating a memorable and enduring soundtrack that has stood the test of time matter with a hypodermic needle pulled off a tray. I know, I know, but stop. 
tough. The secret word is dangerous. The final episode of St. Elsewhere, which aired in 1982, contained a surprising plot twist that has been replicated in at least one other MTM series, New Heart. One of the show's actors, Norman Lloyd, continued to maintain a close friendship with his co-star Ed Begley Jr., even many years after the series ended. In fact, according to Begley, he still had Lloyd over for dinner once a week in 2018. Prior to their time together on St. Elsewhere, Lloyd had met a young, struggling actor named Ed Begley Jr. on the set of Tales of the Unexpected. This encounter marked the beginning of a professional and personal relationship that would last for decades. What do you think happens? Now you are overweight, you smoke. One of the most iconic scenes in St. Elsewhere is the final episode of the series, where the camera zooms out to reveal that the entire series took place in the imagination of an autistic child, Tommy Westfall. This twist ending, conceived by series co-creator Joshua Bram, was kept a secret until the final episode aired. The scene's impact on the audience was profound, as it challenged the way they viewed the entire series. The scene's direction, by Mark Tinker, is simple yet effective. The camera slowly pulls back from a snow globe, revealing the hospital and cityscape below. The performance of the child actor who plays Tommy, Chad Allen, is subtle but powerful, as he simply looks at the snow globe with wonder. The cinematography by Edward R. Brown is also notable, as the snow globe's snowfall creates a dreamlike atmosphere. According to Brand, the idea for the twist ending came from his own experiences with his autistic nephew. He wanted to explore the idea of how people with autism can create their own worlds to cope with reality. The scene has since become a cultural phenomenon, with many fans and critics analyzing its implications and even creating a Tommy Westfall universe theory, which posits that all TV shows that reference St. Elsewhere are also part of Tommy's imagination. Another iconic scene is the musical episode, Aid and Comfort, where the hospital staff sings and dances to let it snow while dealing with the emotional toll of the AIDS crisis. The scene is a testament to the show's ability to balance humor and drama, as well as its willingness to tackle controversial issues. The direction by Mark Tinker is energetic and lively, while the performances of the cast are heartfelt and emotional. According to actor Howie Mandel, who played Dr. Wayne Fiscus, the musical episode was a risky move, but it paid off. He said it was a bold move, and it could have been a disaster, but it worked. It was a way to express the emotions that the characters were feeling without being too heavy-handed. Overall, the iconic scenes in St. Elsewhere are memorable for their direction, performances, and cinematography, as well as their impact on the audience. They showcase the show's willingness to take risks and tackle controversial issues, while also providing moments of levity and humor. The show's legacy continues to resonate with fans and critics alike, and its impact on television history is undeniable. Let's do it on Coke. Let's admit her to LB and get her on a fetal monitor. Just... Actor Zed Flanders and Bonnie Bartlett, who starred in the medical drama St. Elsewhere, had previously appeared together in the 1979 Stephen King miniseries Salem's Lot. The large ensemble cast and challenging production schedule made it difficult for Norman Lloyd to appear in every episode, though he became a regular in the second season. Ellen Bry, who played nurse Shirley Daniels, learned about the auditions for St. Elsewhere through her boyfriend and show creator, John Massius. I'm still sorry I didn't make things easier for you. Are you sure? St. Elsewhere, a groundbreaking TV series from 1982, had a profound cultural and social impact. The show resonated with audiences due to its realistic portrayal of a hospital's inner workings and the complex lives of its staff. By tackling challenging issues like addiction, racism, and sexual harassment, St. Elsewhere contributed to important social conversations. The series is also known for its innovative storytelling techniques, such as interweaving fantasy elements into the storyline. This creative approach influenced future TV shows and left a lasting impact on popular culture. Moreover, St. Elsewhere played a significant role in launching the careers of several renowned actors, including Denzel Washington and Howie Mandel. By providing a platform for these talented performers, the show enriched the television landscape and contributed to the entertainment industry's growth. 
In essence, St. Elsewhere's cultural and social impact can be seen in its realistic storytelling, thoughtful exploration of relevant issues, and the successful launches of many acting careers. Unfortunately, Dr. Cor's illness is all too common. Well, I was going over all the lab reports, Dr. Elfman. Interestingly, both Denzel Washington and Mark Harmon, stars of the 1982 TV series St. Elsewhere, had pre-med backgrounds, which proved beneficial for their doctor roles. The show's producer pitched it as Hill Street Blues in a hospital, giving it a unique and engaging angle. This approach allowed viewers to explore the medical field from a different perspective, contributing to the show's appeal and success. Oh my! St. Elsewhere, a groundbreaking TV series that aired from 1982 to 1988, received high critical acclaim for its innovative storytelling and character development. The show, set in a fictional hospital, tackled complex social issues and medical dramas which resonated with both audiences and critics. The New York Times praised St. Elsewhere for its exceptional writing, acting, and directing, highlighting its intelligent, nuanced, and often humorous portrayal of hospital life. The Los Angeles Times hailed it as a thoughtful, provocative, and entertaining series, commending its exceptional ensemble cast and realistic, character-driven stories. Audiences appreciated the show's bold approach to storytelling with its intricate plot lines and character arcs. The show's willingness to tackle controversial topics such as mental health, addiction, and sexuality set it apart from other medical dramas of the time. St. Elsewhere received numerous awards and nominations, including 13 Emmy Awards and four Golden Globe Awards. The show's creators, writers, and actors were recognized for their outstanding contributions to television with notable wins for Best Drama Series, Best Actor, and Best Supporting Actor. These accolades are a testament to the show's enduring impact on television history. They not only validate the hard work and dedication of those involved in the production, but also serve as a reminder of the show's cultural significance. St. Elsewhere paved the way for future medical dramas and continues to be celebrated for its innovative storytelling and groundbreaking representation of social issues. Dreams. Now, where did you find this little piece of good you? Boy's life? Journal. Sagan Lewis made more appearances throughout the seasons of St. Elsewhere than Bonnie Bartlett, Bruce Greenwood, Cindy Pickett, and Stephen First, yet she was not considered a series regular. Norman Lloyd, who was invited to a cocktail party at Blyatt Danner and Bruce Paltrow's home, was offered the lead role of Dr. Daniel Auslander, initially intended for only a few episodes. Despite his busy schedule, Lloyd accepted the role, which grew to include the entire run of the series. St. Elsewhere was not a high-rated show, but it managed to last six seasons on NBC due to its appeal to the educated 1849-year-old demographic. The show's enduring popularity can be attributed to its ability to engage and captivate its target audience, leaving a lasting impact on the television landscape. Were you born in a the filming of St. Elsewhere, which aired from 1982 to 1988, was filled with memorable moments and anecdotes. The show, known for its innovative storytelling and complex characters, was a pioneer in television drama. During the filming of the pilot episode, the show's creators, Joshua Brandt and John Falsey, were uncertain if the show would be picked up by NBC. To save money, they opted to film the pilot without a studio audience giving the show a unique cinema verite feel. The cast, which included Denzel Washington, Howie Mandel, and Ed Flanders, formed a close bond during the show's six-year run. They would often socialize offset, and many of them remain friends to this day. One notable anecdote from the set involved Howie Mandel, who played the eccentric Dr. Wayne Fiscus. Known for his comedic chops, Mandel would often improvise his lines, much to the delight of the cast and crew. In one episode, Mandel ad-libbed a joke about a patient's unusual medical condition, causing the entire crew to burst into laughter. The show's writers were also known for their creativity and willingness to take risks. In one memorable episode, the writers explored the theme of mental illness through the character of Dr. Donald Westfall, played by Ed Flanders. 
the episode, which was filmed in black and white, was a bold departure from the show's usual format and received widespread critical acclaim. Despite its success, St. Elsewhere was not without its challenges. The show's complex storylines and large cast often made for long shooting days and tight schedules. However, the cast and crew remained dedicated to the project, and their hard work paid off with numerous Emmy Awards and a loyal fan base. In the end, St. Elsewhere left an indelible mark on television history, paving the way for future medical dramas and cementing its place as a classic of the genre. The show's legacy can still be felt today, and its behind-the-scenes anecdotes serve as a testament to the dedication, creativity, and talent of all those involved in its making. Okay. Norman Lloyd, an actor in St. Elsewhere, maintained close friendships with Howie Mandel and David Morse throughout and after the show. In contrast, co-star Ed Flanders appeared in every episode except one. In the final year, due to his disagreements with executive producer Bruce Paltrow, G.W. Bailey, another actor, left the series after the first season for similar reasons. These behind-the-scenes dynamics shaped the show's production and the cast experiences. St. Elsewhere, a groundbreaking 1982 TV series, holds a significant place in film history. The show is known for its innovative storytelling, deep character development, and realistic portrayal of a hospital staff's daily lives. St. Elsewhere is often credited with paving the way for modern medical dramas and setting new standards for the genre. The series had a profound impact on future filmmaking, particularly in the realm of television. Its risk-taking storyline, which often tackled complex social issues, inspired a generation of writers and directors to create more daring and thought-provoking content. Additionally, the show's ensemble cast, which included future stars like Denzel Washington and Howie Mandel, demonstrated the value of a talented and diverse cast in creating a compelling and believable world. Say Elsewhere also inspired a number of subsequent works, both within and outside of the medical drama genre. Its innovative use of interconnected storylines and character arcs can be seen in shows like ER and Grey's Anatomy, while its willingness to explore controversial topics has influenced series like The West Wing and Law and & Order. Overall, St. Elsewhere's lasting legacy and influence can be seen in the many ways that it challenged and reshaped the landscape of television. Its innovative storytelling, talented cast, and thought-provoking themes continue to resonate with audiences and inspire filmmakers to this day. Kathy, you have every reason to feel confused. A terrible, terrible thing has happened to you. In the TV series St. Elsewhere, which first aired in 1982, the character Dr. Daniel Ashlander, played by Norman Lloyd, was originally conceived as a New Yorker, much like Lloyd himself. The show was known for its inside jokes and references to popular culture, including naming characters after series staff members and referencing other TV shows, movies, plays, and books. For instance, during the memorial service for Dr. Caldwell, who died of AIDS, Nurse Rosenthal made a comment about Caldwell thinking he was the sexiest man alive, a nod to Mark Harmon being named People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive in 1986. These subtle references added depth and interest to the show, making it a favorite among viewers. All we ever do is have sex. Arthur Taxier played a recurring role as Dr. Morton Chegley on St. Elsewhere, a name previously used for Lloyd Nolan's character on Julia. Norman Lloyd, another cast member, turned down directorial projects to star in the series. William Daniels, who played Dr. Craig, was provided with the first three scripts when offered the part to demonstrate the ensemble nature of the show and his character's varying prominence in different episodes. On the real bad, yeah. But his immune system is so depleted he's developed a massive fungal infection. Norman Lloyd, a lifelong friend of the Peltra family, was initially cast for a minor role on St. Elsewhere, but ended up as a lead, Dr. Daniel Auslander, due to his strong connection with the show and positive audience response. The orderly, Warren Cool Coolidge, was played by the same actor who appeared in The White Shadow, and he even wore his Carver High School varsity letter in one episode. 
In an interesting turn of events, an actor from Shadow was mistakenly referred to by his name from Shadow in a different role, which he corrected on camera. Ellen Bray, another St. Elsewhere cast member, met her husband while working on the show. I like you, Helen, because you gave the kids a say in whether or not... In one episode of St. Elsewhere, Doctor and Mistress Craig visit Philadelphia, which inspires Dr. Craig to sing a few lines from the song Sit Down, John, from the movie 1776. This is fitting since Daniels played John Adams in that movie, and Dr. Craig even mentions his past as being obnoxious and disliked, just as John Adams was described in the musical. The opening titles of St. Elsewhere feature an elevated train, which is actually the orange line of the Massachusetts Bay Transportation Authority in Boston. However, during the final season, the orange line became anachronistic as it moved to an underground route, no longer running on elevated tracks. Interestingly, the writers of St. Elsewhere shared a building and a copy machine with the writers of Hill Street Blues. Whenever they needed inspiration, they would look at a script from Hill Street Blues, pushing them to do better. In summary, St. Elsewhere had a unique connection to the movie 1776, featured an anachronistic train in its opening titles, and drew inspiration from the writers of Hill Street Blues. If Melissa and I tell you a story, you get up? What do you say? William Daniels, known for his role in 1776, reunited with Bruce Paltrow and Blya Danner a decade later in St. Elsewhere, in an interesting turn of events, Daniel's character, Dr. Daniel Auslander, was initially intended to appear in only four episodes before succumbing to cancer. However, the character's popularity led to his continued presence in the series, marking what Norman Lloyd referred to as the longest remission on record. Daniel's real-life spouse, Bonnie Bartlett, also starred in St. Elsewhere, adding another layer of intrigue to the show's production. The couple's chemistry and talent were undeniable, contributing to the show's enduring appeal. A lot of pain. Is there anything I can do? The medical drama series, St. Elsewhere, which aired from 1982 to 1988, covers a storyline span of three years despite its sixth season run. One of the show's notable actors, Norman Lloyd, began his role at the age of 67, bringing his extensive experience to the set. Bruce Greenwood, another cast member, initially declined his breakthrough role due to conflicting filming schedules. However, he managed to work on both projects simultaneously for several weeks, demonstrating his dedication and commitment to his craft. In the TV series St. Elsewhere, which is set in a hospital inspired by Boston City Hospital, the character of Nurse Helen Rosenthal has a Union Jack tattoo on her butt, a gift from her first husband. Actor William Daniels, who plays Dr. Mark Craig, worked diligently to shed his Brooklyn accent and adopted a dialect close to the Boston accent heard in the show. This accent is similar to the one he used in Boy Meets World. Eat my baby! Talk to me. You better go away. <laughs> William Daniels is well known for his role as Dr. Mark Craig on St. Elsewhere, which aired in 1982. Interestingly, during his time on St. Elsewhere, Daniels also recorded lines for Knight Rider on his days off. His career as an actor has spanned many years, and he is also recognized for his role as George Feeney on Boy Meets World, and its spin-off, Girl Meets World. Howie Mandel is another actor who gained public recognition through his role on St. Elsewhere. He played the character of Dr. Wayne Fiscus on the show. While Mandel has had many other acting roles throughout his career, his time on St. Elsewhere remains noteworthy. In summary, St. Elsewhere provided a platform for both William Daniels and Howie Mandel to showcase their acting talents, and their roles on the show remain significant in their careers. Daniels is also known for his work on Knight Rider and his roles on Boy Meets World and Girl Meets World while Mandel is recognized for his contributions to various other acting projects. Stop crying out loud. Oh, how is it seeing Dr. Dominion? <sighs> Helen Hunt, known for her role on St. Elsewhere, comes from a family with a rich history. Her father's side has German and Jewish roots, while her mother's side is English. Hunt's maternal grandfather was from England, specifically St. Leonard's Hastings. 
Eric Lanaville, who played Luther Hawkins on St. Elsewhere, had aspirations to become a director during his time on the show. In 1984, he was given his first directing job for the episode After Dark. Lanyville has since become a successful and dependable director in television, with hundreds of episodes to his name. Many of the shows he has directed are part of the Tommy Westfall universe. Norman Lloyd, who worked on St. Elsewhere, also produced tales of the unexpected during the same time period. His career in the entertainment industry has been long and successful, with many contributions to both television and film. One over five over eight pulses. <laughs> Still having contractions. Last one was seven minutes ago. I've already up to Maggie. At Norman Lloyd's 100th birthday party, several of his St. Elsewhere co-stars, including Ed Begley Jr., Jennifer Savage, Stephen First, David Morse, and Howie Mandel, were in attendance. Also present were Robert Fuller, Savage's husband, and old friend James Best. Lloyd's acting career began in 1932 when he became the youngest apprentice at Eva Legallian's Civic Repertory Theater in New York City. Many decades later, Legallian, then in her 80s, made a rare television appearance on St. Elsewhere. Bonnie Bartlett and her husband, William Daniels, both won Emmys in 1986 for their portrayals of the married couple, Doctor and Mistress Mark Craig, on St. Elsewhere. Bartlett and Daniels' chemistry was highly regarded, and their awards were well-deserved. In summary, Norman Lloyd and Bonnie Bartlett, both accomplished actors, have had long and successful careers in the entertainment industry. Their time on St. Elsewhere allowed them to work with and meet many talented individuals, and their work on the show earned them well-deserved recognition. All the earmarks of an ectopic presidency. 18 months in prison, nothing but female cons for miles. We're diagnostic. Ed Begley Jr. gained recognition for his role as Dr. Victor Ehrlich on the television series St. Elsewhere, earning Emmy nominations throughout its run. The hospital's nickname, St. Elsewhere, was used infrequently, appearing in only nine episodes, none of which were standalone episodes. Norman Lloyd, a St. Elsewhere co-star, formed a close friendship with Jennifer Savage's husband, Robert Fuller, through their connection on the show. These details provide a glimpse into the production and relationships behind the scenes of St. Elsewhere. In this business with both belt and suspenders. We won't even need pants if all we're gonna do is bend over. Look, I... After his time on St. Elsewhere, Ed Flanders acted alongside former co-star Terrence Knox in The Road Home. Flanders used his salary from St. Elsewhere to buy a ranch in Eureka, California. When Mark Harmon decided to leave the show, his character, Dr. Caldwell, departed the hospital after contracting AIDS. What did you do? I ditched that she married a transit cop. I could have guessed. And now he's on the board of the MTA. Before Ed Flanders was cast as Donald Westfall in St. Elsewhere, Hal Linden was initially offered the part but declined. William Daniels stands out for appearing in almost every episode, missing only eight, with Ed Begley Jr. and David Morse following closely behind appearing in all but 11 and 16 episodes, respectively. The show is notable for its unique place in television history, known as the Tommy Westfall universe, due to a crossover with Cheers and connections to homicide life on the street. The show has links to around 280 other non-animated series, leading Tom Fontana, a writer for the show, to comment on the extensive impact of St. Elsewhere in 23. 30-year-old white male, BP is 90 over 60. Ready Pulse. Alfre Woodard, known for her role on St. Elsewhere, shares her birthday with co-star Norman Lloyd. Interestingly, friends and family members of the show's cast and crew often had doctors named after them, including Dr. Gwyneth Paltrow, whose father, Bruce Paltrow, was the executive producer. William Daniels, who played Dr. Mark Craig on St. Elsewhere, recorded his lines as Kid and Knight Rider on his days off. Both shows aired on NBC from 1982 to 1986, with St. Elsewhere focusing on the staff of a busy urban hospital and Knight Rider featuring a high-tech talking car. Undoubtedly, it will fall to a wreckage fall. Sorry to hear that. Maybe it's for the best. Norman Lloyd, the oldest cast member of St. Elsewhere, was among those who faced unique challenges on set. William Daniels, for instance, had to use a medical dictionary to accurately pronounce medical terms and deliver a pre-surgery speech. The show also faced legal issues when Humana sued over similarities to the Ecumena Company. A disclaimer was added to each episode, 
and the name Ecumena was dropped. These challenges, legal and practical, were all handled with determination by the cast and crew, contributing to the show's enduring legacy. In the OR with Dr. Craig. <laughs> <laughs> to a new beginning for those who seek one. The last episode of St. Elsewhere is known for its inside jokes, such as a character named Brandon Falsey, a nod to the show's creators, Brand and Falsey. It also references the TV show, The Fugitive, with a chase of a one-armed man and a shout out to Hal Gurney, Dave Letterman's director. William Daniels, known for his role in St. Elsewhere, had a co-star, Ed Begley Jr., who was his opposite in many ways. Begley, with a film background, would come in late and struggle with lines, while Daniels, a theater veteran, was punctual and had a knack for memorizing lines. St. Eligius, the hospital featured in the show, is named after the patron saint of veterinarians, sick horses, metalsmiths, and cabmen, highlighting the diverse range of patients and medical professionals in the series. In summary, St. Elsewhere's final episode contained humorous inside jokes, its cast had contrasting work habits, and the hospital's name held significant meaning. Lunch together. I'm so glad you came back. Yeah, well, since I couldn't get the United folding chair to sit down at the bargaining table, I have the rest of the day. Mm. William Daniels, known for his role on St. Elsewhere, gained such popularity that he was invited to speak at medical school graduations. However, he declined, as he was not a doctor in real life. Daniels was also acting on Knight Rider during the 1980s, and he discovered that children in hospitals were more excited to meet the voice of Kit than an actor who played a doctor. So, he shifted his focus during hospital visits to entertaining children with Kit-style phrases and answering their questions about Knight Rider. Bonnie Bartlett, who played Daniel's wife in St. Elsewhere, also acted as his on-screen wife in Boy Meets World and Touched by an Angel. Their chemistry extended beyond one series, creating a memorable and lasting impression. Daniel's dedication to children's hospitals, even during his busy acting schedule, showcased his compassion and understanding of the impact of his work. His decision to entertain children with Kit, rather than his role on St. Elsewhere, demonstrated his ability to connect with his audience and prioritize their needs. If your life is a mess, at least you can do something about that. You're right. You're not In the final episode of St. Elsewhere, viewers were treated to an unexpected sight during the end credits, the MTM kitty in a hospital bed with the plug being pulled, symbolizing the end of the series. Interestingly, this fictional scene mirrored reality as the actual MTM kitty had passed away just two months after the show ended. William Daniels, who played Dr. Mark Craig, holds the record for appearing in the most episodes, with a total of 129 out of 137. Before joining the cast, Ed Begley Jr., who played Dr. Victor Eilich, was already a big fan of Daniels, showcasing the talented cast that St. Elsewhere had. The dedication and hard work of the actors and production team made St. Elsewhere a memorable TV series. The show's impact is still felt today, with its themes and characters remaining relevant and relatable to audiences. Norman Lloyd, known for his role on St. Elsewhere, was celebrated for his centenarian birthday by colleagues at Begley Jr. and Howie Mandel. Begley Jr. praised Lloyd's storytelling skills and inspiration, while Mandel expressed admiration for his stories about working with Hitchcock. Before starring on St. Elsewhere, William Daniels was asked to read for the voice of a computer in Knight Rider. Initially hesitant due to his past experience with my mother, the car, he was eventually coaxed into the recording studio by producer Glenn A. Larson. Ed Flanders' anger and drinking problems led to unprofessional relationships with his co-stars, resulting in his firing from St. Elsewhere at the end of the fifth season. He returned for the first two episodes of the final season in the series finale. Lucy Papandreou, sporting and always fashionable, peach-colored terry cloth jumpsuit, perfect for those footloose and fancy free days of... In each episode of St. Elsewhere, viewers were informed of the exact time the scene was taking place through a corner screen display. The medical drama series featured a large ensemble cast, making it challenging for some actors to appear in every episode. For instance, Norman Lloyd became a regular in the second season, despite his limited appearances in the first in one episode, Dr. Axelrod and P.A. 
Luther Hawkins attempted to cheer up Dr. Fiscus, who had been shot by blowing up rubber surgical gloves and wearing them on their heads. In a meta moment, Dr. Fiscus, played by Howie Mandel, remarked that the bit was similar to something he saw on TV that got a big laugh and nod to Mandel's real-life comedy career. Rating. But nothing to me. Ellen, on the other hand, couldn't get enough. Really? William Daniels, known for his role on St. Elsewhere, is originally from Boston, which aligns with his character's background in the show. Interestingly, Daniels has had a Boston accent since he was 15, adding an authentic touch to his character. Howie Mandel, his co-star, mentioned a great chemistry with Daniels during the filming of the series. In other news, Denzel Washington, who played Dr. Philip Chandler on St. Elsewhere, has a son named John David Washington. In May 2006, John David Washington signed as a running back with the St. Louis Rams, following in his father's footsteps of making a name for himself in the sports world. To Walpole Correctional, it's maximum security. Norman Lloyd's character, Dr. Daniel Auslander, was initially intended for just four episodes on St. Elsewhere. However, due to the show's success and audience response, he remained for an additional six seasons, which coincided with the series' end. Regarding the show's conclusion, show writer Tom Fontana proposed various endings, including a nuclear explosion and a doctor confessing to being the second gunman in JFK's assassination. Executive producer Bruce Paltrow preferred Fontana's snow globe ending, suggesting that the entire series took place in the imagination of an autistic boy. This idea was met with mixed reactions, as some viewers accepted it while others strongly disapproved. William Daniels and his wife, Bonnie Bartlett, won Emmys for their portrayals of a married couple, Doctor and Mistress Mark Craig, on St. Elsewhere in 1982. William Daniels, known for his role as Dr. Mark Craig on St. Elsewhere, secured the part partly due to his friendship with the show's creator, Bruce Paltrow, and Paltrow's wife, Blyatt Danner. Even today, Daniels resides near his former co-star, Ed Begley Jr. in the early stages of St. Elsewhere's final season. The characters discuss the demolition of the elevated orange line. Interestingly, by the time the episode aired, the real-life Washington Street elevated, which formed part of the Orange Line, had already closed. It had ceased revenue service and began dismantling in May 1987, replaced by the Southwest Quarter. I'm one with a cocoa bean. How is she doing? She's checked into a fat farm. Cold turkey, no more chocolate, not even a Hershey's Kiss. Oh. In the 1982 TV series, St. Elsewhere, viewers were introduced to a unique logo gimmick, the MTM Kitty wearing a surgeon's cap and mask. This playful image set the tone for a show that tackled serious medical issues with a blend of realism and humor. The cast of St. Elsewhere included Ed Flanders, who met his future co-star, Christina Pickles, at the University of Michigan Ann Arbor. Their on-screen chemistry was a testament to their long-standing friendship. Another notable cast member was Ulfrey Woodard, who played Dr. Roxanne Turner on St. Elsewhere, and later reprised the role in an episode of Homicide Life on the Street. The connection between the two shows was Tom Fontana, a writer for St. Elsewhere, and an executive producer for Homicide Life on the Street. These behind-the-scenes connections added depth to the show and created a sense of continuity for viewers. The talented cast and creative team worked together to make St. Elsewhere a memorable and impactful TV series. So, I took the liberty of looking up his records. Armstrong, that matter was closed. Please, Dr. Craig. Bruce Greenwood, known for his role on St. Elsewhere, had a passion for skiing before an injury derailed those plans. He underwent six knee surgeries, which led to him wearing a brace while participating in celebrity ski tournaments during his time on the show. Norman Lloyd, also a St. Elsewhere cast member, is best recognized for his role as Dr. Daniel Auslander. His career spans many years, with his most notable public recognition coming from his work on this series. Ed Flanders, another actor on St. Elsewhere, won three Emmys and was well known for his portrayal of Dr. Donald Westfall. His kind-hearted character resonated with audiences, making him a memorable part of the show. In the last 39 years, that I haven't thanked God Almighty for giving Norman Lloyd, known for his role in St. Elsewhere, met Charlotte Ray on Broadway and was later reunited with her on the show. 
actors Bonnie Bartlett and Ed Flanders, who played husband and wife in The Legend of Lizzie Borden, also appeared on St. Elsewhere. A young Chad Allen played the autistic character Tommy Westfall, whose imagination was later revealed to encompass the entire series, and even other shows, leading to the Tommy Westfall universe hypothesis. This theory links St. Elsewhere to over 280 other non-animated shows, including Cheers and Homicide Life on the Street. Lloyd, Bartlett, Flanders, and Allen each contributed to the show's impact and reach, which extended far beyond its original run. I want complete data on Henry Spooner and the artificial heart on my desk by the end of the day. In the critically acclaimed TV series St. Elsewhere, which first aired in 1982, a shocking and tragic event occurred during its production. One of its young stars, Brian Mullen, who played the role of Dr. Jack Morrison, was left quadriplegic in real life after a car accident in 1985. This unfortunate incident led to the show's writers incorporating his character's disability into the storyline, making it one of the first TV shows to address such a serious medical condition. Despite the show's success, the cast and crew were deeply affected by Mullen's accident, which added a layer of reality to the medical drama. I got one. Diane. You don't like that princess, Diane? If you have fond memories of the 1982 TV series St. Elsewhere, we'd love to hear from you. Share your stories and experiences related to this groundbreaking show. How did it affect you personally or shape your view of television? We encourage you to like, share, and subscribe to our channel for more explorations into classic television. Your engagement helps us continue to create content that you'll enjoy. Let's start a conversation and reminisce about this influential series. We can't wait to hear from you. Dorothy, I'm sorry. That cooks it. I'm going down to the hospital where I can concentrate. Besides, I've got all my...